Models like the Ford Maverick and Hyundai Santa Cruz practically reinvented the long-forgotten segment of compact pickups and adapted it to the modern standards of the automotive industry. Buyers can now benefit from their smooth ride and high level of overall refinement due to their crossover-based design without losing the practicality that comes with an open cargo bed. New rivals will soon join the segment and among them, there will be a well-known name, Dakota. We have found at least eight reasons why you should wait for the 2024 Ram Dakota instead of buying a Maverick or a Santa Cruz right now. So let's start with a countdown. Number eight, strong off-road performance. The Maverick and Santa Cruz are great in many ways, but none of them is being a great off-roader. They don't offer much in terms of ground clearance, and even though the Maverick is available with a few upgrades, including a rear locker, it's still clear that it's built over a passenger car platform. That's where the new Dakota could be at a huge advantage. The Ram Dakota will also ride on a unibody platform, but it will use a far more serious four-wheel drive system borrowed directly from Jeep, a company that has been mastering four-wheel drive for decades. We're thinking of the Cherokee's active drive system with various traction control modes, a locking differential, decent suspension upgrades, and all-terrain tires. We also expect notably higher ground clearance compared to the Maverick, which sits only 8.6 inches from the ground. Number 7 more than one configuration. If there's one thing we don't like about the latest pickup truck models, that would be the lack of different body styles and bed lengths. Both the Maverick and Santa Cruz come only in crew cab and short bed configurations. The situation isn't much better among mid-size pickups either. Well, we might not have the same problem with the new Dakota. Reportedly, the new Dakota will be offered in more than one body style. Besides the standard passenger-oriented version, it'll most likely come in one more variant with a smaller cabin and notably longer bed, which seems like a great solution for farmers, small businesses, fleets, etc. At this point, it's still unclear whether we're about to see a kind of extended cab or Ram might go old school and offer a single cab version. In any case, we're looking forward to this kind of diversity. The more configurations, the better. Number 6. Capable Hybrid Powertrain The inevitable process of electrification is in front of all compact pickups. Half of Mavericks sold last year were hybrids, all Toyota's upcoming compact pickup will come exclusively with a hybrid powertrain. The Santa Cruz will probably get a hybrid version pretty soon. We expect the same thing from the upcoming Ram Dakota. However, this pickup might take a little bit of a different approach. Instead of battling with the Maverick for class-leading fuel economy, the new Dakota will rather be much more powerful, which perfectly suits the Dakota moniker, once the only mid-size pickup with 8 cylinders under the hood. The system that comes to mind is a plug-in hybrid setup based on a small 1.3-liter Turbo 4 engine. That system has been powering the Compass and Renegade for a while, with a max output that goes up to 240 horsepower. The Dakota might even go further and offer the same version of the powertrain as the brand new Alfa Romeo Tonali, which counts all the way up to 285 horsepower. This would make the brand new Dakota the most powerful compact pickup on the market. Besides plenty of power, this system would also offer a decent all-electric range. We presume we could see the same 15.5 kilowatt hour battery pack as in Alfa Romeo's small SUV, which provides up to 30 miles of range in the EV mode. Of course, this pickup would offer a slightly shorter but still respectable range. Number 5. Bold Exterior Another aspect where the new Dakota could overshine rivals is the exterior design. We already talked about the variety of body styles, but rumors also suggest bold and very attractive styling, which are the attributes we can't use for the Maverick and Santa Cruz. Ford's pickup is dull, while Hyundai's pickup is pretty much a copy of the Tucson from the front and looks extremely polarizing among traditional pickup drivers. The 2024 Ram Dakota, on the other hand, will offer something different. Our insiders claim that the new Dakota was secretly presented by major dealers at a relatively recent event in Las Vegas and that the small pickup takes a lot of inspiration from the all-electric Ram Revolution, particularly at the front. It uses the same lighting groups and pretty similar design language, which will certainly help it stand out from the crowd. With such a design approach, this could easily be the best-looking model in the segment. Number 4. Smooth Ride Despite the famous moniker, the new Dakota won't have much in common with its glorious predecessors. It's not just about style. The overall design approach will be completely different. This time, we'll see a crossover-based design, a pickup truck that rides on a unibody platform. Simply put, these are the standards of the recently re-established segment and also one of the main reasons for the very affordable anticipated price. The benefits of a unibody platform are numerous, and we presume you're aware of them. Honda has been doing the same thing in the mid-size pickup segment for nearly two decades with the super refined ridge line. The new Dakota will offer great ride quality for sure and it could be even smoother than the Maverick thanks to the more refined suspension 
and setup. According to rumors, RAM plans to install multi-link independent rear suspension in all variants of the new Dakota, which is one of the key ingredients for great ride quality, not just in terms of comfort and smoothness, but also in terms of handling and overall level of athleticism. Number 3. Capable Turbo 4 Engine the aforementioned plug-in hybrid system promises great performance and the flexibility of a decent EV range. However, base versions of the Dakota need to be affordable in order to compete with the Maverick. Therefore, base versions most likely won't come with a hybrid powertrain. Instead, we can count on pure gasoline. Besides the base powertrain, we count one more gasoline version on offer, which would offer a pretty serious performance. Of course, the engine that comes to mind is the well-known 2-liter Turbo 4, which has been used by Jeep, Alfa Romeo, and many other Stellantis brands for a while. That engine comes in a couple of output variants, but we're thinking of the unit that puts out around 270 horsepower and 295 pound-feet of torque. Now let's get back to the base version. That model definitely won't feature that much power. Instead, one of the possibilities is to see a detuned version of the 2-liter Turbo 4, which is available in a variant with 200 horsepower. The other, even more affordable option would be a 1.3-liter Turbo 4. That engine offers around 180 horsepower and quite respectable 221 pound-feet of torque. The only issue with this engine is that it's not particularly efficient, especially when we consider its displacement. Number 2 upscale interior. The full-size Ram 1500 has spoiled us with its impressive interior quality, so we now have big expectations from other Ram models, even from an entry-level pickup like the upcoming Dakota. We expect a lot from it, a well-built and well-equipped interior. When it comes to the dashboard design, we expect things to be way more interesting compared to the Maverick's dull dash design. However, we count on bolder and more rugged aesthetics compared to the fancy Santa Cruz. More importantly, we expect to see nicer materials and even better sound insulation. Besides great Overall quality, the new Dakota should also offer a lot of standards and available equipment. Of course, the company will probably stay reserved with the base model in order to keep the starting price competitive. The higher trims, on the other hand, should go full on throttle and offer the latest tech features, a good portion of convenience features, and even a long list of safety features. A massive 12 inch touchscreen is one of the possible upgrades, while wireless smartphone integration and wireless charging seem like a certain thing. Range topping models could also come with a digital instrument cluster. Number 1. Respectable Towing Capacity As we mentioned a few moments before, Honda has taught us that unibody pickups are way more refined than traditional models that ride on a frame chassis. However, the Japanese manufacturer also taught us that such pickups are inferior when it comes to towing. The new compact pickups have the same problem. Most Maverick models can tow more than 2,000 pounds, while the optional 4K package is the only way to reach 4,000 pounds, which is still a modest rating. The Santa Cruz isn't much better, as the most capable variants can't tow more than 4,500 pounds. Well, they're pretty sure that the 2024 Dakota could do better than that. Many reports suggest that the new compact pickup will share a lot of parts with the Jeep Cherokee, which already offers decent towing ratings for an SUV of such size. It can tow up to 4,000 pounds, so we presume that with a few upgrades, the new Dakota could offer more. With chassis reinforcements, an optional tow package, and similar upgrades, we presume it could tow more than 5,000 pounds, which would put it on par with way more expensive and bigger vehicles, such as mid-size SUVs, for example. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.